Welcome to the Minimasters, guys, and today I'm going to show you how to build a complete Dana 44 front twin traction beam suspension from scratch. What am I talking about? I'm talking about junkyard parts that I've fully refreshed, some lightly refreshed, aka treated for rust, and lots of consumable parts, brand new ball joints, lock and hubs, wheel bearings, all the other odds and ends. Oh yeah, this thing's going to be mint because I'm gearing up for a four by four swap in this 95 F-150. Guys, you're not gonna wanna miss a single second of this video because let's, let's face it, this is gonna be awesome. I'm excited, so let's get started. All right guys, so the first step in our journey for our complete Dana 44 front end rebuild is to get our hubs all set up. So these hubs, our junkyard that have the old bearing races in them. So we wanna get those out and then we'll be able to put in these new Timkin bearings and races. And this thing's gonna feel like it's riding on rails. All right, so let's start with this one right here. So I'm gonna flip it over. Got my punch, got my hammer. I'm gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna hit it on four sides. Now I can feel that it just bottomed out. Yeah, see, it's almost out. And then come right out. So there's that one. All right, so now we're looking at the other one. There's that race that's got to come out there. So again, come in here with a punch. Nice and easy. There we go. All right, so with our races removed, now it's time to put a new race in for our new bearing. So just as a rule of thumb, always take your old part and match the part numbers up to make sure that the correct thing is going back inside. You just never know, things can look pretty identical, but it'd be the wrong one. So I know these both match up. It does happen, it does help that they're both Timkin. So there's that. So take your new bearing race and take your bearing race and driver seal set back there and match up the one that's close. So I've kind of already done this before, so there you go. And essentially what you'll do is, pretty simple, you kind of line that one right up there and then you'll set up this tool, which is pretty simple. And you just face it right down there, keep everything straight, hit it with a hammer. All right, so what I'm checking for is to see that it is perfectly lined up with that inner edge, which that looks pretty good there. And then I'm looking inside the back here to make sure that this edge here is fully seated. So I'm gonna give it another little tap here. All right, look at that. So as you can see now, it's fully in there. I can look at the back side here and I know it's in. Perfect home for our bearing. Let's flip to the other side. So same drill for this side, get your old bearing, match up the part number with the new, check and then you're ready to go. Now, as something I've been doing, right or wrong, is I'll take a little bit of this grease and I'll just put a little around the edge just to kind of help get this thing seated there. So feel free to do that. Take a race and we'll drop it right down inside. All right, so we're just about set. Now. That one is a different size than the other one. So this setter probably won't work. So you'll wanna go take one of your old bearings there, line it up. So that's a close match. So that'll be the one we'll use. All right, same drill. Right down in there. Okay, I felt it kind of bottom out in there. So we're gonna go for our visual inspection. Now this one, I like to go back here and I can see it's fully seated right here against that steel. So I know that one is all set to go. One hub done, another to go. All right guys, so as you might've guessed, the next step in our Dana 44 front suspension build is the knuckles specifically replacing the ball joints. As you can see, these are some junkyard ball joints. These things hardly move. 
and they should move at least a little. So I'm gonna start by taking out this lower ball joint right here. The lower ball joint has this snap ring, so get yourself some snap ring pliers, Amazon, Tool League, actually pretty decent. Take that out there. Okay, snap ring out. And then I have my ball joint press. Don't try to do this without one. I mean, there are ways, but trust me, it's worth renting a press so, to make it easier on you. So just kind of explain what I've got here. I've got this sleeve, which fits around that. And then you'll notice there's this one hat that's kind of got like a stair stepping or wedding cake design. Put that there, hole out the backs, set that up like that. And then we're gonna take the press and I want this hole at the top, again, just giving room for that ball joint to travel upward. And then I'm going to tighten this so it forces the bottom. So there's your, your setup right there. And then on the top, you can use a wrench. I actually end up using an impact gun, even though the box says don't do it. It just makes things go a lot faster. So I'm just gonna go check the underside. We still have travel for that ball joint to go upwards. So even though it's taking its time, we are getting there. All right, so we're gonna tackle that upper ball joint. Now, here's why I like to take the bottom ball joint out is so that I can run this threaded portion of the press through the bottom. If I left the bottom one in, I wouldn't be able to do that. So same setup, sleeve, hat, opening through the bottom to let the ball joint travel upwards. And then again, against the advice on this box, but I'm gonna use an impact. And there we go. Easy peasy. All right, so it's time to install our new ball joints. So just a little housekeeping and prep. I like to take a wire brush, clean out this inner edge right in here, both top and bottom, just to get any rust or dirt or gunk that's in there. I don't want anything in there that will prevent the ball joint from being seated fully uh, and cause kind of an issue down the road. So feel free to do that. The other thing I do, I take a little grease and I apply a little grease on the inside edge. I don't know, just I feel like it helps with install. So there's that. I am going with the Moog Made TTX brand, Terrain Tough Extreme. They are recommended by Desolate Motorsports, which is the brand of suspension that I'm installing for this 4x4 swap. And I can see why. Uh, you know, the little plug there for where the Zerk is. Depending on what model you have, they come with multiple choices of the Zerk fitting nut snap ring they even come with this curious bit of tooling this installation adapter which for your information sits around the ball joint so that any number of adapters will actually fit because otherwise this one fits fine but i've noticed on the tall one some of these ball joint presses don't really fit so that pretty much makes sure that you won't have that issue and i guess it protects some of the paint so be sure to use that Let's get started. Hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss any of this and the install is going to be even cooler. All right, guys, here's my press setup. You can do this any number of ways, depending on what adapters and things you have. But I have this uh, hat down here, this one up here, this sleeve, that installation ring. This one I will have to swap out because it does stick up inside. But I feel like that's the best way to center this piece until I get this fully seated. In which case, then I can swap to some other thing that will allow the ball joint to kind of come out the bottom as usual. So anyway, that's my setup. Time to start cranking down on it. So bottomed out as I said it would on that guy. So time to swap to this guy. All right guys, so as I've queued up my lower ball joint, hat, sleeve, that installation adapter, ball joint, and then I have this recessed cap down here. I'm not gonna do that one thing just because it's actually sticking through quite a bit already. So there really wouldn't be room for it. So time to press it in. All right guys, so I kinda wanted to bring you back to ball joints. So where I left you off, I was actually pressing this lower ball joint in. 
Um, didn't go well. Didn't get it all the way seated. I was having a really hard time getting this one in there. And as you can see, it's actually gone in straight, but man, I was just having a hard time getting that one in there. This one is mostly seated, but I think it's kind of gone at an angle. I may have to punch it out, but keep that in mind. Look at this knuckle and look at these ball joints. Now I'm going to surprise you with two things. A, I did not use an impact gun on the ball joint press to install those. I actually used my Ulsa Tools extendable breaker bar. So incredible there. But I think the thing that really made it work, and it was a suggestion from a bunch of you guys when I posted about this, I put my ball joints in the freezer, okay? Put them in the freezer and then installed them. All I did was use a breaker bar. I probably exerted myself with just a little bit more on this upper one, and probably because I heated up the knuckle and that actually sucked a lot of the, mo the cold out of that ball joint. This one down here, it didn't heat the knuckle, just froze the ball joint and it went in perfect. I mean, look, there's like so much room for that snap ring. Sometimes that snap ring is a total pain to get on, but there you are, plenty of room. So anyway, I'm gonna finish this one up, go and correct this one, use the freezer method and we'll be done with ball joints. Well, there you are guys, four fully installed ball joints. And before you go and throw those with your bin of parts, make sure you go put your Zerk fittings on and your snap rings. And that's it guys for part one. Click over here for part two so you can catch the rest. See ya.